Okay, so boss fight time. And they're lagging again. I'm going to have to log out for that, I think. Don't let the cold bite you too hard. Yeah, transporting seems to have fixed them. Okay. Come back if you need work. Oh, we have Reapers now. So, Reapers attacks against enemies who are mobilized, slowed, stunned, or vulnerable reduce the cooldown of their powerful wind-up wind up attacks by two seconds. 
Reapers have a 15% charge of cloths of flesh off enemy forming a corpse. And you deal 10% increased shadow damage, but you can no longer raise skeletal warriors. Level 13, you unlock that. I thought it was level 18 that that was unlocked. I want to get it to at least 15 and look at what... Um, get four again. Uh, look at what... Um, the thing it tells us. Uh, the skeleton mages and see if you can like do them both at the same time or not. I'm thinking not. I think you have to choose. dude for the dude's not here that's right there was a dude here who the guy's son was hunting him and you had to go up and do a quest either i've been either i need to progress the main i guess the main campaign further or it's not going to give me that Still skeletal priests when they're when you're full of minions.
close and distance and critical strike. I forgot I'd need to go over there and take a look at the world boss area. Let's head over there and do that. grown too cutting even for these parts Well, I'm here, but it's not telling me information, which is strange because they said there's going to give you like information on the stuff. Like when you go to the area, it'll give you a timer for the next time the boss is going to appear. And it's not doing that for some reason.
What is that? Break a bone spirit. Critical strikes from Sever have a 14% chance to spawn a blight pool of blight under the target that deals 36% bonus damage. This effect can only happen once every three seconds.
Saints hideout. An ambush? You want an audience with our chief? Spread the word. I am happy to help. We display these trophies to... There now, back to the battle. Um, also, uh, this reminds me, being here at the bear place, um, apparently, uh, the butcher was like a random chance to happen that you would see him. He's not always there. He's a random chance to happen anywhere. Apparently, in any of the dungeons, I think. And he's supposed to be the most difficult fight. And I I agree, he was pretty damn difficult. And I was actually... I can't remember if I was max level on that or not. But I was... Uh, it was, a, I want to say, a pretty high level. I was like at least 20, I think.
I'm pretty sure the way this is going to work when we hit 15 is that it's going to knock it out. It's going to replace the skeletal warriors with the skeletal mages. There's no, there's no indication that they have uh, a prepify on them. I mean, I can tell because they do have the uh, the deal around the bottom of their feet, but there's no like mark around their health bars to easily tell. See how this guy's got that little swirly thing around him? I think you can tell he's got the crapify on him, but seriously, it doesn't. Um, It doesn't like put one up and like either near their name or near their health bar. That would be kind of good. Because that's where my eyes are really focused most of the time is near their health bar. And I'm not talking about their health bar up near their name. It would be nice to have it up there as well, but I'm talking about their little health bar over them. Like this guy's got that health bar next to him underneath his name. It would have been nice to have it there too. Of course they would, I guess, worry about it being kind of... Uh, I guess interfering with the marks for champions and elites, but still...
It's also kind of annoying that I have to aim the uh, thing. The uh, skeleton deal. Because if you don't have your mouse near a corpse, it, uh... It, uh, doesn't count. So, like, if that corpse wasn't there, it wouldn't count for me. Oh, I got it. Okay. I'm not going to finish the dungeon. There's no need to. Something is spirit, 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 spirit offerings. Splintered and dead. <laughs> well. On your weapon. Almost fifteen, so it's almost skeletal mages. I, I'm ninety nine percent sure that's what's going to happen. It's I will have to switch my skeletal warriors for the skeletal mages. I I won't be able to have both of them.
Shadow Mages. Shadow Mages. Oh, okay. So now they're put together. You can have up to three of them. Okay, cool. So, all right. That that makes me feel better. I could have swore this was not going to work like this. So, Shadow Mage attack has a 10% chance to stun for two seconds. This cannot happen on the same any more than once every five seconds. Shadow Mages file additional Shadow Bolt every six attack, and we can sacrifice them. Your maximum is 15, but you can no longer raise skeleton mages. And then we got cold and bone. I'm going to do this and lean into the uh, thing here. So I have three skeletal mages and four skeletal warriors. Okay. So it just all comes from this one skill, Raised Skeleton. You can have four Reaper Warriors and three Shadows. And deals do Shadow damage and these guys do physical damage. All right. Then we have this. Let's see, the thing about it is, is I don't know if it still only counts me or if it also counts my... Um, summons as well. If it counts the summons as well, that would be nice. Okay, I need to spend one more point. And that unlocks this. So let's look at what these are next level. Corpse and McCree skills. So we can do, well, below 50% life, you get 10% more healing from all sources. While healthy, your blood skills deal 6% more damage. So this is all about the blood skills. Blood skills. Blood skills over, increased overpower damage. And then blood orbs also heal your minions. 15% of the amount. Then we have Reaper's Pursuit. Damaging skills with darkness skills increase your movement speed. But we have darkness skills. Gloom. When you damage enemies with darkness skills, they take 2% increased shadow damage from you and your minions for 2 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Darkness skills deal 3% bonus damage to enemies who are slowed, 3% and 3% bonus to enemies stunned or immobilized. These bonuses stack and apply your savage damage, apply to your shadow damage dealt by your minions. Darkness skills have up to 15% chance to stun for 1 second. Okay, so if I was able to continue on and level up, I would be taking this whole wheel here. If I was going to continue what I was doing right now. This would be my next thing to get, unless there's some big skill I want. Your bone skills, critical chance for each 10 episodes. Every 100 essence you spend reduces the cooldown. Critical is striking 10 times a bone. Your bone skills deal 5% increased damage. And your bone skills deal 6% increased critical strike damage to vulnerables. Okay, so that's all about bone. When a corpse is formed, your skills or your minions fortify for 2% base life. This would be good as well. Because we do make a bunch of corpses. As you can see, there's like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like 10. 10 to 12 or something like that. Okay, and we have two skills here. We have corpse tendrils. Veins burst out of a corpse, pulling in enemies, stunning them for three seconds, and dealing 26 to 32 damage to them. Does not consume the corpse. Interesting. And it's a cooldown only. Enemies who are in range of corpse tendril are slowed by 50% before being pulled. Corpse Tendrils has a 20% chance to damaging enemies to drop a blood orb, or when enemies damaged by corpse are made vulnerable for 3 seconds. And then we have Bone Spirits. This is where, this is what your one shot deal is. 
the way this one works is you want a something that will build up essence really, really quickly and then spend it all on this. And you want to do this over and over again really quickly. Uh, well, within 11.76 seconds, because it does take time for a cooldown of this. So consume all your essence to conjure a bonus spirit that seeks enemies. Upon reaching the enemy, the spirit explodes, dealing 107 to 130 damage to the target and all surrounding enemies. Damage is increased by 3% for each point of essence spent casting bone spirits. And you want to raise your maximum essence. If bone spirit critically strikes, its cooldown is reduced by 6 seconds. This effect can only happen once per cast. So this makes it like 5 something seconds. And bone strike has an additional 10% critical strike chance, so that leans into this. And then after Bone Spirit hits an enemy, you generate 30 Essence over the next 4 seconds. This helps you get your Essence back quicker. So you can choose to either lower your cooldown or get your Essence back quick, quicker. Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to head back to town and switch to Druid and play it for a little bit and see how it is. Um... I'll probably stop this video and then uh, when I get back to town, I'll switch after I get back to town and switch and stop this video and make a new one for the Druid. So these are our ultimates. So we have Blood Wave. Counters white to blood. It deals 120 to 447 damage and knocks back enemies. Increase the damage in life of your golem by 15%. Yeah, you'll probably have your golem by then. So if you want your golem up, you can do that. Increase damage reduction by 6%. For, for, increase damage reduction by 6%. Reduce 2%, by 2% for each active minion. So you don't want this at all. Sacrificing both skeletal warriors and skeletal mages. Increase their sacrifice bonus by 20%. Okay. Here's Army of the Dead. Call forth the deep buried dead. Volatile skeletons emerge for the next seven seconds and explode when around enemies, dealing 40 to 49 damage. Your army of the dead when army of dead's volatile skeletons explode, they have 15% chance to leave behind a corpse. Army of the dead also raises your skeletal warriors and skeletal mages. So if your skeletal warriors and mages die, this'll just resummon them. It's a quick panic button for that as well. Um, there's two direct, oh, this is all connected. You can go either direction. After you, after you've been healthy for at least four seconds, you and your minions gain 4% increased attack speed. Your minions deal 10% increased damage to while you're close to them. Every five seconds, your skeletal priest healing will heal your skeletons for 20% of the maximum life. Okay. So increased healing for the skeletal priest because it already does that. It heals them for twenty. For, it heals them for ten percent, and then another twenty percent on top of that. So thirty percent. So a bigger heal. Your minions cannot lose more than seventy-five percent of their maximum life from a single damage. It's, yeah, that's probably going to have to be uh, required later. So you'll have to take these two, and it's going to be required later. And then we have Bone Storm. A swirling swarm of bones appear around you and your golem. A golem as well, dealing 240 to 294 damage to surrounding enemies for 10 seconds. Okay. So this is our... Wow, there's so fewer skills on the Necromancer. I guess because of the summons is the only thing I could think of. Your bonus skills deal 1% increased damage for each point of essence you have, have above 50 upon cast. So does that go into... Yeah, that goes into Bone Spirit as well. So those two tie together. This will make it do even more damage. Um, increase your maximum life by 10%. After being healthy for 15 seconds, your next blood skill overpowers. So this leads into the blood. Shadow Blight, Shadow Damage, infects enemies with Shadow Blight for 2 seconds. You and your minions deal 10% bonus damage to enemies with Shadow Blight. Every 10th time an enemy receives Shadow Damage from you or your minions, while they are affected by Shadow Blight, they take an additional 28 to 34 Shadow Damage. 
And then we have Kainland's Edict. After you have not taken damage in the last three seconds, your minions gained 15% attack speed. While you have at least seven minions, this damage, damage bonus is doubled. Or this bonus is doubled. Okay. So, hmm. Two ways you could go, really. Uh, I'm not sure which would be better. The Shadow Blight or the Talon's Edict. Because we're going to have... We have like four, five, six, seven right now. So this would go into effect. So we, we would have 30% increased attack speed. Or we could do this and get 10% bonus damage. And then just a bonus shadow deal out. Not sure. Uh, so if the game was released and I could put points anywhere I wanted to... Um, I'm not sure if I would continue on with the shadow or if I would do something else. But if we was going to continue with the shadow, we would, of course, keep decomposed, put the points into this, um, grab blight, put points into that like it is now. Um, that might be if you have the legendary effect, it might be worth to have this more because it pulls them into the center. So it might be worth it. I'm not sure. It might be better just to go into the damage. Of course, you want the Skeletal Warrior Mastery. I wouldn't worry about any of these. Unless you're going to go Defender and then you want Spiked Armor. Um, uh, you don't want any of the Corpse stuff here unless you're going to get Corpse Explosion. You might want to do Corpse Explosion early, but it's uh, physical damage only, so it might not be worth it um, because you're going to be leaning heavily into shadow damage uh, with the darkness stuff. Um, of course, you want your Decrepify, probably max out Decrepify because um, it, it gives you more as you rank it up. Um, more damage reduction and more slow. Um, yeah, you'll want Skeletal Mage Mastery as well. And here's the Amplified Damage. It's a little passive, so you can do this as well. Um, and then you'll want this whole deal. If you're going to set it, only if you're going the shadow damage route, then you'll want this one. Um, also want the necrocratic carpus there or the, um, fortify of your life and things, because you do make, like I said, a bunch of corpses with this way it is. And I would go army of the dead and it's, extras and then uh at least these two if not also this one as well uh to get more attack speed i'm not sure if this is worth it because you are a ranged character you might want to do this if you're if definitely if you're going to be going to sith um definitely don't want to stand alone golem mastery because you're going to have your golem by the time you get this so you can level that up um and then a uh, choice between Kalen's Edict or Shadow Blight. I'm not sure which would be more damage. The 30% increased attack speed or the uh, Shadow Blight. The problem is, is if, you're, if your minions go below 7, you're going to go down to 15% increased attack speed. And at that point, I think the Shadow Blight's going to be better. So it's an either or scenario. If your minions can survive... Talon's Edict is fine. If they cannot survive, then Shadow Blight is your best bet. Um, this is all depending on how it goes as you level up. Um, if your Indian start, if your if your major, if your skeletal warriors start dying, I would definitely put them on defenders um, and take the thing for the negate damage. Um, if not, uh, if not, if you, they're not going to die, of course you want either skirmishers or reapers. I would actually personally go with reapers because they do their, um, they do, they, um, 
get their cooldown back quicker because we are immobilizing, slowing them, stunning them with this. <clears throat> uh, we're not immobilizing them, but if you take that other one on the uh, Blight, you will be immobilizing them. It's up to you which way it wants, but you are still slowing them and stunning them. And you can also vulnerable them later in. Um, you don't really need the extra corpse unless you're going to go the uh, corpse explosion route. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, especially early on, you'll want the uh, additional warrior. Uh, if you're having, uh, if you're easily critting, then you'll definitely want to this even more than the reapers. You'll want this because that does a lot more damage. Um, but if they're dying, you'll definitely want to get them to get them defenders and then the first one. And then later on, if you, if they're more stable without this, you could put it on this. If you have, if you go build thorns, um, as for skeletal mages, don't know. Um, I haven't really played with them enough and we'll have to test out the other stuff later, but let's me, uh, Let's go and test out, um, I'll go ahead and head on back to town. Let's go and test out the Druid. I really want to test out the Druid before I go for the evening. So give me a few minutes and I'm going to log out here and switch to the Druid. And I'm also going to go use the bathroom, get me a drink and things like that. So I'll see y'all in just a minute. Okay. See you then.